Hey, hey, welcome to the stream. Opening up with Vampire Survivors. And uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking as always. Hope you are enjoying me getting through all of this stuff. Um, I'm looking at the Steam achievements, so give me a sec. What is next on this completionist list? Um, according to this, it says... 10,000 with Menya or 10,000 with Suto. Okay. There's Suto and that's Menya. I'm not going to remember these names. Uh, let's try. You have an early morning tomorrow if teenagers need all the strength you can get. Just, I don't know. Just do a Fortnite dance or something. That'll that'll win them over. Uh, what do I? I guess just any stage. Can I imagine you doing that? <laughs> ah. See, I feel like if I say yes, that's a bad thing, and if I say no, that's probably a bad thing as well. It's like, if I say yes, you'd be like, what, I look like the kind of person that does a Fortnite dance? And then if I say no, you're like, oh, you're saying I can't do a Fortnite dance? Like... <laughs> we, don't, we don't really have this in Australia, but I, I plead the fifth. So, yeah. The body's better than you am. You am? Jeez, I can't even read. Well, I'm just saying that just that, that wins them over when you hit the, the like some sort of dance. Yeah, I think we have to go this. Aren't K-pop moves, like, harder to pull off? I don't know anything about K-pop, however... I have seen people try to do dance moves from that stuff and fail. Particularly one where it's, like... I don't know how to describe it, but it's... I guess it involves a lot of flexibility, I guess. The demographic is more interested in the rap and TikTok. Okay. What am I even going to do here? Power! Uh, I guess let's just get this. Just for good measure. They like you just need to be awake make them want to stay up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. 
I did say one thing today that did make me feel old, though. Someone at work shared an Instagram reel. And it was of someone asking a kid to uh, make the, you know, the gesture. A gesture you would, not in these words, but they were saying, you know, hey, show me how you, you talk on the phone. And the way they were, they were doing the gesture, it was like, oh, oh yeah, right, damn. They would have never have hold, held like an original handset, I guess. And then show me how you take a photo and it's not like the click thing. It's just, it's just holding like a rectangle and kind of tapping. So, yeah. <laughs> and another one is like, um, Pizza Hut. Someone tripped out when I talked about, like, having a birthday at Pizza Hut. They were like, what do you mean having a birthday at Pizza Hut? And it kind of dawned on me, oh yeah, right. They would not know that Pizza Hut used to have, like, a salad bar and, um, like, you'd go have your birthday there sometimes. <laughs> and they stopped doing that stuff because they lost too much money. Also, hang on. You're having them write poetry and make songs. But I mean, if they enjoy it, they should be awake. Shouldn't need to wake them up for that. But knowing some of them were born after YouTube became a thing is weird. It is. But yeah, definitely feeling age when you see that. Good thing keeping up with the times and having a solid sarcasm bandwidth or you'd be royally fucked. It does help, I think. Something to it is just, I guess, just being open-minded to new things. Although, granted, there are certain things where I'm like, nah. <laughs> I'm good. I'd rather be called old. It makes it easier when you play games, I think, to kind of remain like you seem young, as there is still a thing in society where people kind of associate that with younger people. But, yeah, I don't know. There's some stuff that I just, I, I can't really do. I just can't sit on stuff like TikTok and Insta and just flick through stuff. I don't know. Mm. 
It's just never been me. I don't think that's a result of a generational thing. I truly believe, like, if I was a teenager right now, I'd kind of behave the same way. Because, I mean, the stuff that was popular in, in its heyday when I was a teenager, like, MySpace, Bebo, and then eventually Facebook, like, I just never got into that shit. I kind of always just avoided it. It, it just wasn't me. And then everyone's like, nah, you have to start a page. Like, no, I don't want to. So I'd like to think that I'd behave the same. attention I can't keep looking at chat <laughs> unfortunately this character doesn't move as quickly as I'd like I'm like trying to read what you wrote Sandy but it's like too much of a paragraph for this character right now This was just here. Okay, I'm going to get stuff. at least. Hey. 
could take this in a really expensive direction, but I don't know if I want to do that. This character moves quick, it's fun. But when you go back to slow mode, oh. It's kind of suffering. That's enough here for a multi. Okay. I will make this work. Really doesn't want to give me what I want. There we go, there we go, there we go. Screw it. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for the most expensive build. Stupid werewolves are just so tanky.
I don't know. I don't think this is going to work out. <laughs> Yeah, power. I need the other gun. Damn it, it's already at max. Mm. I mean, technically, I can grab this. I can technically grab it. It doesn't have to be the other gun, it's just the other part of it. I just wouldn't want to waste more levels. I just got unlucky. So hang on. This has become stronger and invincible. Oh. Okay. Maybe I should take more advantage of that. I hate this weapon at the start. Just hit something! <laughs> it's not hitting anything. Okay. I, I, I guess we're really doing this, huh? Test the patience. <laughs> okay. Whip. All right. There we go. There we go. Ooh. So I, I guess I can set myself up here. Just take the opportunity and set this up already. Okay. Yep, you better believe it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I think it's too early to reroll. Let's just...
power. Again? Okay. Uh, let me think. No. Okay. Figured it was worth a try. I want to start lining up these passive items. Uh, oh. But like, <laughs> give me passive items. This, this is all well and good, but now it's the opposite problem. I guess there's that. That's a start. Go, go, go. There we go. So, cooldown, duration, and movement speed. That's what I want.
Uh oh. Where's my power? Uh Okay, there's duration. Hey, nice. Got air damage. Again? I probably should have left that one for a while. Okay. Cooldown. So the last one's movement speed. And then I have completed what I want. And then just have to survive. Okay, go, go, go. There it is. All right, excellent. Okay, now I'm going for the heart. Get the heart. And now we move towards... Leaves or spinach. I think I can make this work. Nice. Wait, what? Why didn't it give me the upgrade? Okay. I, I guess. Where's the fire thing? Apparently I'm directly on top of it. There it is. Okay, there it is. There it is. Life leech. Thank you. Okay, this one's going much better.
go, go, go. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing the bonus stage in Mario or something. Attaining power. Yeah, start getting the bird. Okay, so I'm pretty much there. And there's the twin guns. going to use this to get the spinach. Twin birds. All right.
I have to get to 10,000 kills, so you know. It's a little while away from that. I'm trying to see the order I need to approach these in. becoming a visual mess. Uh, keep going. Right now I'm opting for damage more than anything else.
Power! Okay, birds aren't ready to merge yet. What's coming up on my game list? Uh, hey, Carlos. Uh, I mean, primarily I'm just getting through the Zelda games before the new one comes out, but after Kirby, because the Metroid Prime remaster came out, I'm going to check that out. And then um, a new game in the Yakuza series has come out, so I'm probably going to play that. Hades to, oh, that, oh, I thought you meant short term, like that's long term. I mean, if we're talking long term, I do want to revisit Elden Ring and do the DLC that was announced. Whatever that may be. Like that, that's probably around the same time Hades 2 is going to come out. They announced DLC, uh, yeah, just yesterday. No release date, but just that it's in the works. Yeah, so I'm gonna revisit Elden Ring. Probably do like a magic playthrough since last time it was a strength build. Am I OP in the game? What in this? Yeah, but I'm just trying to. There's a Steam achievement that I'm trying to do, which is like a hundred thousand kills, not easy. So power is not the measure here, it's like, did I get powerful enough quick? I may have to mute the game sounds, because I think the... <laughs> What happens in this game is, if too much is going on, it overloads the audio channels. It just looks like I'm a walking disco vault. Yeah, this is what this game becomes eventually. The screen fills with enemies and... But there's just something about just starting with nothing and then... ...getting to a point where you're stupidly strong, that's satisfying. I don't know. Scratches an itch in my brain. I mean, the other difficult game that I want to play that should be before June is, um... I don't know if it's a sequel to Hollow Knight, but it's another game in that realm is, like, Silk Song. Why not? I got the ability to stop time itself. Okay, there we go. Have I seen the Rise of the Ronin? I'm terrible with names, so I can't say that I have. But let me... Whilst this is playing. Is that that one, um, that looks like it's, what do you call it? Yeah, I was going to say it's by Team Ninja. And it looks like Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Okay, now we have the bigger fireworks. Yeah, I may have to, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Guys, was boring. Yeah, I enjoyed it. That one was more story-driven. Ah, 
add fun with Ghost. Sometimes, if not, to just look at the landscapes that game had. Yep, okay, it's struggling. <laughs> Hang on. Sound effects off, alright. Ghost was pretty of a bad story. Uh, I don't know, I thought the story was okay. It wasn't anything special, but it wasn't bad by any means. Like, I, I wouldn't- I wouldn't call it bad. <laughs> I reserve that word for stuff that is truly terrible. That, like, has no redeeming quality. Or I use bad in the realm of something that is genuinely bad, but it's so bad to the point that it just- It's something you have to check out just because of how bad it is. I just enjoyed it because it was something chill, just to kind of kick back. Especially I, I played it at night, so just the landscape and the chill vibes after a long day of work was pretty good for me. But you know, to each their own. I'm not going to say it was amazing, just to be clear. But I did enjoy it, personally. Bad fun, but bland. That's your say. Yeah, that's fair. I can I can appreciate that and listen to it. Did you play, when you played, just out of interest, did you play, play with um, English dialogue or Japanese dialogue? Don't remember. Okay. Because one, one thing I have in particular with that is like, with those kind of games, uh, I don't like doing the English dialogue. For me, if I'd use Japanese, it just seems like more of a movie. So I guess that's why I asked, like, maybe it was just a thing where... Because I saw a bit of English dialogue get gameplay and I was like, ugh, yeah, I don't know if I could play with English dialogue. Just a preference. But... I think... The number one problem I have with a lot of English adaptations of things is everyone just has to have an American accent, and I don't understand why. Otherwise, it sounds like broken English. Not necessarily. You can have British and Australian. Or, like, formal Australian, I mean. And there's nothing wrong with, like, something sounding like a person speaks English as a second language. Just life. Like, you don't always have people that speak that way. And I would argue that some American accents are more broken than other things. Like, it just depends on what you're used to. Oh, like a Japanese person speaking English. Yeah, no, definitely, but... I don't think... I guess what I'm saying is not everyone has to be that. Like, you can certainly have that, and it, I think it would be okay. Like, I'm not saying everything should... Like, don't use American people at all. It's just... 
don't only use American accents. Oh, I have fallen short. How am I going to get 10,000 kills like this? Maybe it depends on the stage as well. Like, maybe that's part of it, is certain stages might lend better to it. I know that in the tower, I, I definitely did well. Hmm. But yeah, I didn't even get, well, I got halfway. Just need to suit the character. Some of the best shows you've seen are dual or triple lingual. Yeah. Just variety, I guess, is good. Like Narcos? Yeah, Narcos is great. I'm gonna fall short of this. I can't even tell if that thing's chasing me. I oh, know there it is. I think maybe the problem with this is like, whilst it's great at this point, I think this just takes too long to get up and running. Maybe I need to go with something a bit more budget. pay attention to these things. <laughs> Wait, did it? Oh no, it's on me. Ugh. I thought it died. Wait, you had dry monotone voice acting because little to no emotion or humor is felt. It depends on the character, because some characters are meant to be that way, but if you're doing that across the board, yeah. Oh, come on. How are they not dead yet? I might not be able to kill one. Mm, 
This is not looking good. I might have to rethink my strategy here. A fourth one's gonna come in and then I'm gonna- yep. <laughs> Probably be screwed. They're gonna go through my- my hip protection. I think the problem is this character's primary weapon is just too random. It's great when things are grouped up, but for this sort of thing, where you're fighting one-on-one -on -one or one before, I guess now, it just... It doesn't always land. Particularly when it lands in the corners like that. Oh my god, I'm up to five of them. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna kill one. Uh, I'm not dead. Should I bother? Ugh, I, I, yeah, that's just... It's not really the point of what I'm doing here. Wait, sorry, I missed all this. You're a stickler on story. You can sell it in any medium you're in, you just need good writing and execution. Oh, that's fair. That is fair enough. I guess I, I like to experience games not just for the writing as well. It's like the visual aspect. Um, like I, I like to look at the visuals as well, not just, I guess, story. Story is definitely a, a factor for me, but probably not as large. Like I can kind of overlook a bad story if the game has like something else behind it. Um, but, you know, speaking in terms of stuff in the vein of story-driven games. Like, obviously not every game has to have a story, right? But, I was told a long time ago to just experience different media. Because, I mean, my work is, is in design, right? So it's like, <sighs> it's probably the best advice I've ever received is just, if you want to be in design, just experience as many different things as you can. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. It's just experience it. Because then, I mean, either way, you take something from it. Okay. Uh, I want to listen to that song. Which song is it? Some of these track titles, though. Mums are tough. Some of these songs are pretty good. Yeah, this one. Oh, wait, I picked... No, 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 no. Hang on. I was supposed to pick the tower. Uh, okay, hold on. This one I did well in. Ah, it didn't look. I wanted a change in music. Okay. Third time's a chump. Any shows I'm watching or excited for? Uh, not new ones. I haven't checked out The Last of Us because I haven't played the game yet, and I'm going to. Just once I get through this batch of stuff that's in my backlog, I'll, I'll get around to it. Um, so I'll check that out at some point, because I've heard it's, it's decent for uh, adaptation. The game is better. Yeah, I mean, that probably went without saying. I wasn't expecting it to be better than the game. So, I mean, I'm gonna experience the game first. 
you'd recommend watching the show first? Nah. I'll watch- I'll play the game. Cause then I can be like, oh yeah, that's where they got that from. So I'd rather experience the original medium first and then see what the adaptation did. Even if it means that the adaptation isn't as good. I mean, honestly, what TV adaptation has been better than the game, right? It's just one of those things where uh, I would never expect that. Or think it would be a possibility. But I mean, they're not the they're like they're not the same thing. Though. That's the thing. Like the game has an interactive aspect, and the TV show doesn't, and it kind of has a restriction. So it's it's kind of like an apples and oranges comparison. There's like a factor that the TV show will just never be able to compare with. I mean, you can say how faithful it is, but. I don't know, I've been comparing the two against each other. Yeah, so how am I gonna do this? Let's try a Rune Tracer. Okay, I'm gonna try this build. Faithful 8.5 took some creative liberties, of course. But I mean, I've heard compared to other stuff. That's that's fine. Eh. It's the movement speed. Character's really screwed if there's nothing to directly defend that. Probably top five or three for video game adaptation. Well, there you go. Yeah, we need AOE. Succession Season 4 got announced. Haven't seen Succession. To be honest, it's kind of been hard to get into TV shows because the annoying thing about stuff that's on subscription services, particularly Netflix, maybe maybe this is just a Netflix thing, but like you get invested in them and then out of nowhere they just kind of cancel them and I feel like that's just been something that's been happening too much lately. So I've found it really hard to get into stuff. You pirate stuff, yeah, but that doesn't. It, it's not. A, it's not a money thing. Just to be clear, like, I'm not talking about. Oh no, I would hate to pay a subscription fee. That's not it. It's. It's the fact that I put my time into the TV show and I'm enjoying it, and then they shit can it. That's the problem. It's got nothing to do with like cost or anything. There's nothing worse than having a TV show you enjoy and then they kind of just. Stop it. <laughs> and then that's it. It's like abrupt and 
all all that time you spent watching it, it's like you don't get a conclusion to it. Netflix green lights everything, so it has a 30% batting average. Oh no, I've heard that like it has to have there's like metrics like um if people binge it or if people complete it, it has to have like a particular ratio in that regard. But I mean, that's just the classic definition of, um... They do the same in the venture capitalism world. It's kind of like, they'll throw money at, you know, a bunch of startups, like 50 of them, in the hope that one of them pretty much pays for the, all, all the 50 and then some. And that's what they're doing with TV shows. It's kind of like, they'll green light a bunch of stuff and hopefully one of them is going to be like the next big thing. And, you know, the merchandising and everything associated with it is just going to pay for all those other shows that they had to cancel. So, I mean, it's a proven way to, I guess, invest in things, but like, from a consumption point of view, it's fucking annoying. Because <laughs> the thing is, some things like, if you look at historically there are some tv shows that did horrible in their first season but then in the second season somehow picked up like take cheers for example like one of the uh like highly regarded comedy shows that um did horribly in its first season but then later it started doing well Cheers, no, cheer. You know, like, you know, raise a glass. It's a, sh it's a show from the 80s. It had Ted, well before my time, it had Ted Danson in it um, as a bartender in, in, uh, what was it? Boston. Still no idea. Yeah, it's old, but... Like, I guess what I'm saying is if that show were to have, like, you know, started in this Netflix era, it wouldn't have gone past its first, first season, right? Family Guy was the same. Yeah, Family Guy is probably, like, a more modern example of that, because that show got canned twice and got brought back. So, that's the one downside of anything that's algorithm-based, or just, like, they have these metrics, is... Yeah. It's kind of hard to gauge how it's gonna work. Like, they don't really take those gambles anymore. HBO has a batting average of 70. I'm not so familiar with HBO because we don't have that conceptually in Australia. So I wouldn't know what shows are HBO based. But that being said, the, the intro, like, I do know that a few of my, like, highest rated shows are definitely from HBO. Um, what am I going to do here? Hang on, that goes with that, that goes with that. That and that is that. Wings. I guess I have the freedom. Alright, we're gonna do summon night. I have one free slot. HBO shows the ones that you'd have World of Cooler talks about. Yeah. I mean, AMC is pretty decent as well. Like, we got Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul out of that one. I'm kind of interested to see, um... Because they're working on some other show. It's 
it's not going to be set in that universe, but, you know. If the writing's on the same level, and the uh, casting choices are the same. Sopranos. I'd need to get around to watching that. I've always heard good things. Um, the Wire. Love The Wire. I want to rewatch it. Because uh, I, I re <laughs> when I watched it, it was uh, potato quality. Let's just say that. So it'd be good. It'd be good to rewatch that one. Is it because maybe AMC and uh, HBO kind of have like? I wouldn't say a demographic, but, like, they kind of know what kind of show they're looking for, whereas in Netflix, is they're try it's like a blanket sort of thing. Oh, wait, what? I got that. No, no, I'm restarting. That was bad. That's going to affect everything. I thought this was going to be easy, but... To be honest, I hadn't gotten enough kills here, so... Walking Dead was garbage, was okay, but dragged on too much. I think that was the result of them catching up to... The, uh, the comics, right? And then they kind of had to, uh, split from it. That's just the result of anything that, um, gets an adaptation before the original medium is done. I guess do this. This is suffering! <laughs> this character's too slow. AMC and HBO tend to like more gritty shows. I think that's it, yeah. I didn't want to use the word adult, but gritty's better. I was... that already. This is not working. It's not gonna help. I guess just get that. Disney Plus, you hate it because it's all family friendly. Is it? I mean, there's some stuff. There's some stuff with Fox and Marvel that isn't that family friendly. I mean, it's certainly not gritty. Seventy percent. Yeah, I mean, probably. But I mean, in in Australia, um. They combine it with stars, so you get like a bunch of stuff that's definitely for more adult viewers. <laughs> HBO is a softcore pod. Yeah, I mean. I forgot if, if it was Game. I feel like it was Game of Thrones. That's the way someone described it to me once. Like, if you love softcore porn, you'll like, uh, Game of Thrones.
can I send a link? I mean, I probably won't watch it now, just because... Um, don't... Because I usually upload the stuff to YouTube later. I don't want anything to trigger DMCA shit. Even though me watching it and, like, reacting to it is probably within fair use, but, you know. Can you PM me? PMs are disabled. You can post the link. I just probably won't watch it now, but I'll, like, put it aside. I had to disable PMs because I was getting too many bots. Like, the other week. Man, it was, like... Non-stop for, I, I think, up to half an hour before I actually just went and disabled it. It was just a bunch of bots just messaging you shit. And it's just been getting worse and worse. Like, I, I don't know. I don't see any reason to have DMs open on, on Twitch. Like, if anyone wants to reach me, I'd be like, yeah, just do it here in chat or, like, there's an alternative way to do it. Who hacks small streamers? It's not even hacking, it's just bots that try to sell shit. Hey, wanna be famous? You wanna be famous, don't ya? Come to our website. You can buy followers and uh, viewers. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where it's a numbers game, right? It's like, the majority of people will say no, but that one person that does say yes, it's no effort to get, it's no effort to get a, a bot to just send a message, right? It's like, it's just gonna do it. It's, it's not a human at the end of the day, so it's like, that's why they exist. It's a numbers game. The Twitch bubble already burst. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's definitely... Everyone wants to do the streaming thing, and it's just... You can't. But you know what? Like... Something that I heard... Lately really resonated with me. Is like... When you do go towards the streamers that are like have some form of success not all of them I don't want to like say everyone but it kind of gets to the point where all of them are doing the same thing and I mean it in the sense that like before they start their video if it's on YouTube before they start their video they'll talk about a sponsor so it's basically like you're watching ads and then on stream, um, large enough streamers will have, like, ads plastered around their overlays and stuff. And so it's, it's just become very corporate. Towards the higher end, I'm saying. It's hard to get famous to some streamers you don't get that are famous. I mean... Some of it boils down to luck, to be honest. It's like right place at the right time, and also doing the right, the right thing at the right time. And then you get Twitch ads on top of that. Yep. Which is why with what I'm doing here, like I have no, I've never had an expectation that I would ever turn this into a full time thing. Like I have a, I have a job and. My job lets me live comfortably, thankfully. So, I always went into this with the mentality of this was just gonna be like a creative outlet. I was gonna play games that I was probably gonna be playing anyway, but now I kinda just get to talk to different people. And I mean, it's a more interactive experience as well, so. I mean, don't get me wrong, if there was ever a sign where I could do something with this, sure. But I never had that expectation, ever. 
And I think if I were to go down the path of like trying to turn this into something where it was my day-to-day -day thing, I would try to do something in a manner where I wouldn't have to resort to ads. You know? I'm sure there's a way to do it, but it's just... At the moment, everyone is just... Kind of doing the same thing. I'm not talking from a content perspective. Just to be clear, it's more just, uh... Like, let me talk to you about today's sponsor. I mean, I think the reason some streamers get famous is just... At the end of the day, it's their personality resonates with a particular demographic, and... Again, some of it comes down to luck, and... Maybe they have the drive to do the networking thing. I mean, you could say that about anything, right? Like... I can't understand why anyone would ever watch... Stuff like, uh, the Kardashians, for example. Or, like, any anything in that realm, where you're kind of watching just rich, out-of-touch people just living life. Like, why? So, you know, the same can be said for, for streaming. It's kind of, I guess the, the way that I see it is, like, much like junk food, it, it's, it's basically that. It's like a junk food type of viewing. And... I don't know, it's not for me. Not all, not all the time. But I, I can- I can understand why... ...certain streamers, and I'm never gonna say names, because I don't believe on, like... ...just shitting on someone, <laughs> just because I don't like their kind of content. That's just- that's not it. But I, I understand why it's a thing. And in the day and age of algorithm-driven stuff, I guess... That's what drives interactions, right? And drives recommendations at the end of the day. You like to shit on people a little? Fair enough. But I mean, yeah, like... There's, there's other factors. Sometimes you'll have some person doing the same thing, but then... It's just like, it all comes down to what appeals to people, or I guess the wider demographic. Like, take unboxing videos, for example, right? There are, there are some unboxing videos that I watch because the person that does them... They go to the effort of, you know, they, they unbox it, but then they also go in, into in-depth as to, you know, why... Um, they picked what they picked without looking at something that's been sponsored financially, right? But, you know, they'll go into it properly. Versus, like, unboxing videos where they'll just do, like... I don't know. <laughs> pretty pretty much the video is summed up by their, their YouTube thumbnail. They just have some dumb expression on their face. And so, see, yeah. But, you know, the, those ones tend to do better than someone that is more informative, so... I think it's just got to do with... Just, I guess, the concept of escapism is like... It's the same reason people eat junk food. It's just... I don't know. 
I'm trying to articulate something, <laughs> but I've, I've lost my train of thought. MKBHD is a happy medium. Sponsored? Yeah. Like, like, I think there's a way to be sponsored and still kind of retain a semblance of not really going too far in that regard. But, you know, I can't be angry at the people that do go fully sponsored. It's just, I won't watch them. It's just, at the end of the day, like, it's gone from something that is... creative, right? It's like, it starts off as a creative outlet, and it probably remains that way, but then... It starts leaning more into like a, oh no, I have to do this in order to survive type thing. And that's kind of like the sad reality of like taking anything creative and um, trying to make a living out of it. Is at some point you will have to make concessions in that regard. Like unfortunately altruism doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> Now, I know some content creators that flat out, like, make a joke out of it. They're just like, oh no, it's time for me to shill stuff, and then, you know. And that I can appreciate it, because they're being honest with their audience. They're just saying, yeah, look, guys, this is annoying, but I kind of have to do this. Pays the bills, keeps the lights on. I'm definitely doing a lot better in this one. It's only 10 minutes and it's already 32,000 kills. If you have proper sponsors, you do it more professionally. Yeah. But I guess not not everyone can do that. Not everyone's fortunate to get to that point. Uh I mean I, I guess I want this for AoE, let's see. Yeah, like Intel or Samsung, you take it more seriously. Yeah. I think it's also got more to do with the fact that, like... Some of these ones that you see on, on videos, it's just because you've seen them so many times, they kind of become annoying. And you can see with some of the people, they're just in it for the paycheck, and you know that it's like, oh, they genuinely probably don't use this, and it, it just sounds rehearsed. So, like, you're less likely to listen to it. If I was to ever do a sponsorship thing, I'd ha it'd ha it would have to be something that I would have to have used before the fact. Because then I can speak with it honestly and, you know, sound like, hey, yeah, hey, I, I do use this. By the way. VPNs are good ones. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of tired of hearing about like NordVPN and ExpressVPN and I mean, don't get me wrong, they're, they're the lesser of the evils. They're the lesser of the evils, for sure. I'd rather hear about VPNs compared to some of the other stuff, but I still hold them in the same vein of just like I probably wouldn't want to do them. Oh, right, yeah, I'm waiting for Clover. 
Oh, wait, I shouldn't have banished that. Because I was going to pick one up. Ah, uh, look, it's fine. I can go without it. Alright, it's there. Spinach. I guess there's not a lot of incentive for me to go south then. They offer solid price, is what you're saying. No, I understand that. Like, I guess m I come from a point of view, like, it's not just about it being solid, it's about, m like, perception of being sold to, you know what I mean? I feel like when you get hit by an advertisement, it's like you kind of lose a sense of agency. It's like, oh, they're going to be taking some of my time, okay. And when it sounds rehearsed, it's just, eh. So, if they're going to do that, I would rather it come from a person that's, you know, using it and genuinely uses it and is like, yeah, okay. At least doesn't sound like, you know, they have someone behind them. <laughs> A, a fucking teleprompter telling them to read this. And that does take up some of your time. It's like, and you don't get a choice in the matter. It's kind of like you don't have a sense of agency. Any ad that you're presented with, right? You don't have sense of agency. You're just blasted with the ad. So if that's going if that's going to be happening, I'd rather it be done in a manner where I don't see like you know the puppet strings attached, because that just makes me more annoyed that they're showing me an ad. Also, hey Nick, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, how's, how's your week been, dude? Sometimes you miss TV ads. Yeah, because those you can appreciate for what they are, I guess. And it's like, at the end of the day, there's like... Some of them do go to creative lengths. Twitch has the worst ads, yeah. Hang on, you'd rather have one ad on the side of gameplay than 15 minutes of ads every 12, 25 minutes of the movie. Yeah, that's true. No, but I guess I'm- it's not- it's, it's not so much the- the amount, it's more conceptually what they are, if that makes sense, like how this how they're structured you know like some of them have a narrative some of them tell a story versus some like compare it to stuff that you see on twitch none of them really do that they kind of just are very oh i'm going to present you exactly what it is Or they'll, they'll interrupt what you're looking at, and they'll be like, But first, let me tell you about this. I was just talking about something I, I heard recently, um... Saying towards the higher end of the scale when it comes to streaming, everyone's kind of doing the same thing. And it's not from a content creation perspective, it's more from, uh... Like... To make a living, people have to do stuff like, hey, before getting to today's video, let me tell you about this sponsor. And then it's the same sponsor that you've heard on, like, 50 other channels. Or on a live stream's case, like, you'll have banners and shit plastered on the stream. And again, it's like, the same- you'll see the same banners over and over again. And it's kind of gotten to the point where, like, things are very... 
commercial and annoying. I don't know. So I was, I was just saying, like... Yeah, use my code for... Exactly. Use my code for 10% off. That's another one. And I'm not... I'm not set... Like, just to be clear, I'm not shitting on people for doing this. Right? It's like, look, you have to do what you have to do to survive. This is just the reality of doing streaming on a full full-time basis, right? But that being said, like, it's it's just the comment of, like, that's what it's become. It's like, it's it's true. It's kind of become this super commercial thing now. But yeah, all I'm saying is, like, if I'm gonna be presented with that stuff, I'd... I like it when it's in a manner that it's... It doesn't... I don't see the puppet strings. That That's the best way I can put it. If they're doing it in a manner where they're either doing it and, you know, being completely transparent and being like, Hey, I know this is annoying, but, you know, I have... You know, I'm doing this to pay the bills, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. I'm more willing to accept it. Or if, you know, they take creative liberties, right? I, um, Brutal Moose, for example, like, has a, uh, does a lot with HelloFresh. But the way he does the, the sponsor at the end, he always, like, does it in a creative edit, right? It's not, it's not him reading a script. Brutal Moose does, um, just got popular for, uh, like, microwave food reviews. I don't know. And sometimes goes and, uh, watch, will buy a VHS tape from, uh, eBay or something. Won't know what it's on and then pops it in and sees what's on it and kind of, you know, looks at old commercials and that sort of thing. So. It's got pretty decent content. But yeah, whenever he does his sponsorships, um, he does them in the editing style of his videos and you know they kind of have like a sense of humor to them I, I don't i don't see it as someone reading a script right and not believing in it what am i gonna upgrade into here um uh, yeah i guess do that why not internet historian with VPN ads. I don't think I've seen them before. But, I guess, yeah, th there's a way to do that sort of stuff, and... I guess I'm saying not everyone has mastered that art. And it tends to be more of just, uh, oh, okay. I'm going to see this again, am I? The ad that I see here so much that is it's just annoying me is um menu log. I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but like here it's Katy Perry singing a a menu log theme and it's it's just <laughs> It's definitely a brain worm. It's a brain worm. Never got that one? Okay. Never heard of menu lock. Probably doesn't exist there, then. I really don't want to show it. I really don't, because I don't want to hear it again. If you're curious, just Katy Perry menu log ad, and then you'll see it. You should be able to find it. I'm not gonna play it. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear it. Volunteering for that ad. Not even in the name of content will I do that. It's a brain worm. It'll get, it'll get stuck. 
Wait, is it brain worm or ear, ear worm? I mean, either way. I guess what I'm saying is it'll burrow itself. Both? Okay. It's kind of like with any, um... Australian that was alive in the 90s. Not gonna say grew up in the 90s. But, like, has memory of the 90s. There was this, um... Were they a cell provider? I think they were just a, a phone provider. Like, fixed line. But they had this ad. And they have this little jingle. That involves clapping. So, I've done this a couple of times where I'll just do that jingle and then the person will be like, Oh, fuck you. Just... <laughs> Why'd you do that? Now I'm gonna have that stuck in my head. Earworm is more music based. Well, that ad is music. It's Katy Perry, so I guess it's Earworm. What's the jingle? Um, so the company was AAPT. And the product was Smart Chat. So that'd be like A A A A P A A P T. Smart Chat. Like a fucking cheerleading thing, you know? And they would do it in different ways every time, but that was the gist of it. And they would say it a few times so it kind of stuck sorry to any australians that may be watching this at some point in the near future <laughs> they're just like oh you dick okay well i'm at eighty-seven thousand, so it looks like i will hit the hundred thousand required I guess, I don't know if it's the stage or if this genuinely worked out better because I have a cheaper build this time. Oh my god, look at how quickly... How quickly it murders stuff when in this invulnerable form. Okay, I see, I see why this is an achievement. Because when you get up to this point, it's just... The moment you enter this form, it just completely melts everything. Have a couple of jingles in your head. <laughs> it does happen. Oh, the, the sound when you start up Windows versus Mac, yeah. They did get rid of that for a while, though, the Mac startup one. And then they brought it back. Okay, we're finally successful. Oh, I thought that was... Never mind. I mean... It look, it's looking pretty good. I think I can get the kills required in the remaining eight minutes.
Uh, wait. Did I? Oh, it's down here. I didn't even see it. There we go. Twitch ads is just the cringiest internet ads. <laughs> I just get a lot of uh, movie trailers and uh, game trailers. Every now and then it'll be something for like healthy gaming snacks. Which is weird. There's like a... Uh, an Australian company that they do breakfast stuff, like typically cereals, but they also have um, like health bars. So I guess they're trying to get kids to be like, hey kids, this is also gaming snacks as well. So I don't know. Just get general Red Bull hats. I've done over a hundred thousand, so I guess just pick this stage from now on. I think it's just purely on the enemy type. Whoa. Like, it's just purely on the enemy type. These skulls are so easy to take out. I'm sorry, Cos, but what you wrote there, it kind of just reads like something Jerry Seinfeld would, would say. What's the deal with Red Bull? I mean, it's two bulls, and then it says that it gives you wings? It makes no sense. <laughs> oh, man. That's I, I just uh, that's all I could picture is this it's a it's a Jerry Seinfeld stand up bit. I mean, there's a lot of products that have names that don't make sense. Doesn't. Isn't there a candy cereal called Apple Jacks that doesn't actually have apples in it? Please don't compare him as humor sucks. His humor is G-rated humor. It's like family-friendly safety humor. What's the deal? You're just making more of a say. No, I know, but like, I guess the observation is like something that would set up a Jerry Seinfeld joke. That's all. The observation itself. Like, I wasn't saying that what it was saying was structured like it. It's just reading it. I just thought, oh man, this this sounds like the start of an episode to Seinfeld.
use Queen Sigma for this, not sure if you have that. Um, I can't use Queen Sigma because it specifically says to use this character to get the, the kills. Never found him funny before your time. No, I mean, even... Okay, the, the show Seinfeld... What was funny about it wasn't Jerry Seinfeld's comedy, right? It was the fact that... It was just a bunch of stories, I guess, that were relatable, relatable in terms of, like... Going out and doing something and then some awkward social situation happens, right? Or like a, a faux pas in terms of conversation. Friends was your Seinfeld. Okay, yeah. I mean, different, but yeah. In terms of like the impact, I guess. Friends was... Someone said it represents the, uh, just an idealistic point in people's lives where they still have time to kind of hang out with their friends and life hasn't gotten to the point where it's extremely serious yet. And, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you would kind of want to live like them, right? Like, having full-time jobs and still being able to hang out with your friends on a daily basis, like, wouldn't that be nice? Going somewhere, hanging out. But the reality is, like, that's not ever a thing. Especially not now. So it's, it's, it's kind of just comfort, I guess. Just saying that. Because you get reminded of the stupid stuff you and your friends used to do, and yeah, it provides nostalgia. Okay, well, I, that's it. I achieved what I came out to achieve. I'm happy. We're good. We don't need to revive. I have unlocked... Wait. What have I unlocked? Cannot be damaged, but disappears after reaching the current time limit. Starts with... What? Cannot be damaged, but disappears after reaching the current time limit. Huh. I don't know what that means, but okay. Oh, no. That was an expensive character. I wanted to unlock you. I might have to start doing runs with uh, you. Because this is the money maker. Oh, you can't kill Reapers and other things after time is up. Oh. Okay. Right, gotcha. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave Vampire Survivors here for now. I'm just gonna stretch my legs for a couple of minutes. I, I want to refill my water bottle because it is a little bit warm outside, so. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that very quickly. It'll be like a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna continue Wind Waker. Oh yeah, I gotta plug in the Wii U because the HDMI cable is currently in the Switch at the moment, so I gotta move it. So yeah, give me a couple of minutes. Um, let me just say yeah. If you watch this later on YouTube, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right.